this is, this is, this is. Welcome to it, everybody. Brand new episode of the My Career Podcast. Um, it's a great day to be alive, isn't it? It really is. Uh, my guest, Bob McKnight. Uh, we're going to get weird. What's up, Bob? What's up, man? So he's right here. Um, I appreciate everybody out there um, moving, sticking. Right now, it's been very cold in Texas. Very cold in Washington, too. Both places, cold. You're bundled up right now. You not have a heater in there with you? I do have a heater. Still cold. <laughs> I'm I'm sweaty. You know, I was nervous about being on here with you. Not um not so much because of you, but just you know, I just want to make sure I perform well. So I was thinking about when I when I play music, I'd always do like some kind of just exercise or something. So I was downstairs. I did some jumping jacks, but like I'm 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 old and fat now. So now I'm just hot and sweaty. So I'm like I don't think it worked well, but. Hot and sweaty is what you wanted, though, right? Like maybe, that, maybe that's an yeah. indication of of being ready to move. I don't know. I honestly, I think I think you did something that most musicians, most performers, athletes, all of them do. Fighters. I always wondered when I was a kid. I'd watch my dad would watch boxing, and. I don't remember any of the actual boxing matches. Who was boxing or whatever? I just remember. The boxers come out round one drenched in sweat. Yeah. And I was yeah. always like, a, as a kid, just like, what is that? That's so weird. You know, I, I don't know if that was real, if that was like part of the show. And I asked my dad, like, what, why do you, why did these boxers, why are they sweaty already? And he's like, well, they, they they're warmed warm, up, warm up. They warm up yeah. before the, the fight so that they're ready to fight. You have to be ready. And, I've I've always taken that with me everywhere, you know. Whether it's like you said, like I I, I don't do this for podcasts usually, but <laughs> but but like uh, obviously for shows performing, I try to. You want to be limber. You want to be kind of like clear headed and awake. And um, part of that is just stretching and getting the heart rate up. And it's more so with MXPX, but I also do it when I do speeches. Um, not so much like running around and like. I'm not sweating before I go. I'm not winded before I go out to, to make a speech, right? But uh, but I do stretch out, you know, as much as you want. Like, I don't know, it like clears your mind or whatever. But it's funny that you do that. You did that for this. I, I appreciate your your honesty. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now, now I'm, I, I, I feel like self conscious now. Everybody's Why? like, oh, God, what's, what's wrong with him? No, I'm just, I just, I literally just told you that I do the same thing. When I want to do well at something, sit down and just talk. What's wrong with you, man? That, I'm just telling. I mean, if if it's not my, well, my podcast, I'm not nervous to be on my podcast, right? Like if I was going on a, you know, a podcast that was maybe like millions of listeners or something like that, I might be, I might be nervous in the same way I'm nervous for a show, which is just like a heightened awareness of what's going on, what you're about to do. Because I mean, you don't. It's a difference between like a morning where you wake up and you have your everyday routine versus you wake up and you have a flight flight somewhere. Right. Some people aren't at all bothered by flights. I'm not Dude, bothered like, by a flight. I don't but like them at all, but it's a, it's a, you know that your day is going to be different and you're going to be a little bit out of your comfort zone. Maybe not even comfort zone, but controllable zone. You know, you, once you're in an airport, more rules stacked up on you. I'm not saying they're bad rules or some of them are pretty reasonable, but get on that plane you're on that plane you're in that steel tube i don't mean to freak you guys out but like there's nothing you can do you can't <laughs> it go gives outside. me anxiety man i don't like it at all <laughs> sorry i uh, uh why what, what about flying gives you an anxiety in, okay is, how's is that work the fear of death i don't know man I, I i think it's like there's no control there's just there's zero control like what i just said i just you know yeah. I was just saying like that that's you wake up in the morning, and if you're doing something you always do, you're going to go brush your teeth, go to work, whatever. Eh, you, you do that all the time. You know where the exits are if something crazy happens. But like more than anything, it's, it's not that you're scared of death. That's not what this is, right? It's the control. I don't know, man. I'm pretty scared of death. <laughs> of course. You're, but what I mean is you're scared of being somewhere that, where somebody can control you and you right. can control your own self. Yeah. We flew to, yeah. we flew to Texas 
oh man, it might have been nine years ago. Mm-hmm. And I remember like going to the airport and I was like, all right, I don't like this. I'm not gonna like it. But you know what? I'm gonna I, I'm gonna be messed up about it on the way there. But on the way back, I should be good to go. And that wasn't the case. On the way back, it was <laughs> it was worse. Bumpy. Uh, well, the the dude like I don't know what happened, but we went past the airport and he had to like turn the plane sideways and come back. Mm. And so like I was looking out the window at the ground. That's freaky. And I was like, all right, well, we're not going to do this again. Like I'm 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 going to have to get like paid money for something for me to get on a plane again. I think. So what was your what was the first experience you had on a plane that made you scared to go on planes, or was that your first? That was it. I've done that it was once. Your first? Yeah, yeah. So it's like almost like the build up, maybe. Like if you don't do something for so long, and then you finally are going to do it, it could be a little weird, a little little scary. Um, I mean, like it wasn't like I wasn't in. I wasn't one of those people that just like oh, 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 oh. like it wasn't like that. I yeah. just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. I felt for two hours I was just uncomfortable, and I just wanted to get off. I think it's going to happen either your first time ever, which you mm-hmm. got that out of your, your system, you're good, or it's going to happen after like so many, right? So like that's not comforting to me because I'm like, hey, I'm not scared of flying because I've I've been on so many flights. It's like ridiculous. It's like water, drinking water. But at the same time, you think of it like, okay, I've been on so many flights that it's it's bound to happen eventually. <laughs> but no, here's something that, that hopefully will help people that are scared of flying. Um, and I think I mentioned this before, but it it takes a lot more than one thing to bring a plane down. Now, an engine, two engines, that could bring a plane down. But like... One little thing on a plane, like, um, like obviously, turbulence. That alone isn't going to bring a plane down, usually. It would have to be insane turbulence that, that does something to the plane or the, the controls, the engines, the aileron uh, on the back, you know, on the wing or whatever, like something like that, right? That's what's going to bring the plane down, not the actual bumpiness, I'll tell you what I did. Did I help? When, that that probably didn't help very much. No, <laughs> no. I'm just thinking about the time that I was on the plane and it was shaking. Uh, w- this is what I did immediately when I got on the plane. I looked around and I just started reading people. And and you can tell. You can look at people on a plane and go, okay, this person gets on a plane all the time. Because they just they act differently. They walk differently. They know what to do. Whereas you look at people like me, I'm trying to get my bag in the thing and I'm having trouble with it. Like you can look around and tell who's new and you can look around and tell who's not. So when we were in the air and we started, I had six people picked out. I remember the six people that I was like, okay, I'm going to watch them during the flight. And when the turbulence happened, I immediately looked at those people. One of them just kept reading a book and I was like, okay, we're good. This is whatever this is, is normal. Cause that dude's just, yeah. he's not even missing a beat. So that's sort of how I did it. Like I, I found some people to to watch, and now if any one of those six started to freak out a little bit, I probably would have screamed and threw up in the seat. But uh, I I, I kind of knew my plan going into it. Good. But yeah, I did. It wasn't better on the way back. I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. It's never fun. It's never fun. But you know, it, with anything, I think it's just important. Put your seatbelt on. Make it sure it's tight. So if you you can just ride that train, you know, just like ride those bumps. <laughs> it's like a, we katie and i just listened cool. to that uh the the come on ride it choo choo train song come like yesterday yeah. we found this uh playlist of just like 90s hits yes that's that's fun we uh my wife just put on she was looking for 90s music so she said 90s and of course it was like all these weird songs we didn't know mm-hmm. um nothing that's like oh yeah this is great and then you have to get more specific so it was like, okay, 90s alternative. Boom. You get Pearl Jam. You get you know, Nirvana. All the Seattle bands, right? And then you, you start getting like um, maybe eventually Chumba Wumba. Was that, was that yeah. 90s? Late 90s? Yes. It was close. That was a great song. I get knocked down. And I get, <laughs> yeah, isn't that Chumba Wumba? I, there, man, there used to be this channel that came out. Um, shortly after MTV started doing all the reality show stuff, yeah, I think it was called Fuse. Maybe I oh, don't yeah, know. Of course, it, Fuse. Yeah, that was it. A played cha- music. That was a pretty big channel, actually. 
it played music constantly. Yeah, it was I MTV remember that. after MTV stopped playing. Yeah, I remember that coming on there. And I oh, that song got stuck in my head so often. So, uh, do you remember Mamba Number Five or Mambo Number Five? Oh yeah, man, that was in the jukebox. Little bit of Jennifer, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it was in the in the jukebox at the Pizza Hut that my wife worked in. She wasn't my wife at the time. Yeah. And oh my god, so people it, would come in. That was a song. Every family that came in all day long would just pick that song. So those poor employees just heard that song over and over again. Okay. What What did you play on that jukebox for your wife? Did you try to impress her? No. No. You didn't play it. No. Either? No. No. What nah. What would you What should you have played? Which Which What would be your go to? Oh, corn? Well, I mean, we we corn. Um, so that's, corn that thing? sounded horrible. Nothing against. Corn fan. It just wasn't. It wasn't not an your, our, not your bag. When, when our thing, um, ooh, walk, 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 giggle. Isn't that, wasn't that the song? Yeah, very <laughs> romantic. You know. <laughs> no, uh, I think we we actually covered this before. Um, MXPX was the music that I, I I pulled up to impress her. I yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, any 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 chance I got I was like, oh, you want to pick something? I'm like, yeah, here's MXPX. I love these guys. I don't even know anything about you. I was just playing them because I. <laughs> I knew that was in her wheelhouse. Nice. I like the poster, by the way. Which which poster? What do you see? Right behind you. Oh, the Aladdin one, mm, or no. this one? Yeah. The Ever Pass the Moment. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where I got that from. That might be hers. Yeah, it might be. It's a, that looks like an original promo poster. Yeah, I don't have a clue where that came from. Yeah. I don't know. I have to ask her. All right. Since we're on like kind of fun stuff. Um, Talked about planes, made everybody mm-hmm. more freaked out. But just you know, what are you gonna do? You're on a plane. You're 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 either gonna make it or you're not. I I, I gotta say, usually the back of the plane survives. <laughs> Front of the plane usually not. You're so not making it better for anybody. I'm just saying. I've seen some <laughs> crash videos, and uh, I was Did like, Did you see oh, that one man. recently where the plane just like the passenger jet just turned, turned. upside down and went off? Oh. Was it the India one in India? <sighs> I think so. There was a guy that was face live Facebook living. Yeah, inside yeah. the plane, and all yeah. of a sudden, that's terrible. All of a sudden, everything's on fire, and you can't see anything. But I didn't see an outside shot of that, so it could have been. Man, I don't. I don't, I don't usually I don't, go looking for that kind of stuff. It's like thrust upon me, you know. And, and so I'll, I'll see that video because it's just there. Like, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll check this out. Yeah, can't you should have brought it. that can't up. Oh my god, it's terrible. Voiced, Terrible. When it's foisted, any uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm fans out there? Foisted. This is why you shouldn't have people take part in your intros. This is, I think you might have said like two, two things. <laughs> I'm not did, doing my job you, as a you, producer. Did you foist yourself onto the intro? No. I, I'm, I'm I not. invited you on. I was like, oh, let me just do this. Oh, that's so sweet. So anyway, I wanted to ask, what was your first concert, first show? Um, my first show, uh, I think it was a, was a local, it was like a local show. Um, this place called the Ark in Wilmington Wilmington, that had North Carolina. Yeah. Wilmington, North Carolina that had a, a bunch of just punk bands playing and stuff like that. I think, man, if I'm not mistaken, oh no, 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 I'm, I'm mistaken. Okay. Probably my first big shows. Um, I can't remember exactly who it was, but my family used to go to uh, the Rockingham racetrack in North Carolina for NASCAR. Mm. And every time we'd go, they'd have like this huge country show, which uh, it it wasn't, you know, I thought it was cool because I was like a little kid and it was a big concert and it was rowdy. Like it was rowdy. I I, I look back at it. I'm like, I don't know that I should have been there. There were people throwing like beer cans and stuff, um, but I saw. I, I think I definitely saw John Anderson. Um, a couple other people. I don't. I don't really remember. John but Anderson. once I like, once I could make my own decisions and go to my own shows, I want to say it might have been yours. Really? Yeah. And uh, at the House wow. of Blues in Myrtle Beach, we talked about that last time about that you going yeah. to that show, but I didn't realize it would be maybe your first show. 
Yeah, because I, I, I've i never been real big on going to shows, to be honest with you. Um, most of the shows that I've ever gone to, I've played in them. Until you saw MXPX, and then you wanted to play in your own band. Yeah, it was, it's, it was fun, it. it's funny how that, how, that does happen. I mean, I'm not saying that it was because of us, but I did see shows as a kid, like a pretty young kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw some touring acts that were like borderline, like, metal more like hair metal kind of stuff because it was big back in the and this was i would have said this was like late 80s um but i didn't i always kind of wanted to be a performer anyway i just like i would like put on brian adams and just lip sync to the whole you know reckless album on my bed (coughs) pretend i was in like some venue you know stadium or something so for you it was music immediately it wasn't necessarily performer it was like music well, it was music, but but early childhood it was sports. It okay. was uh, I want to get really good at karate. I want to get really good at basketball. I want to get so good at pitching a baseball that I'm the best pitch. You know, like I had the you know I would think of that about everything. I would think that about video games. I, I would think, <clears throat> all right, this uh, you know whatever. Uh, what is it? Uh, the Ocarina of Time. Uh, I played that so much on Nintendo sixty four. Legend of Zelda. The Ocarina okay. of Time uh, is a is one of the Legend of Zelda. So I played the early one too. But but I remember thinking like I'm gonna get so good at this game that <laughs> I'm just gonna know all the moves. I'm gonna know where to you know. And and did that happen? No, of course not. Because I was doing other things, I, I, I liked girls, you know. Like <laughs> it's too busy, but but with with music, it was that too. It's like I just I want to get. I don't even know if I thought of it that way, but I think of it that way with certain songs. Like I want to learn this song, this part, so good that I just can ace it or whatever, you know. Like, and it wasn't ever like that about music as a whole. Like I want to beat the game of music, like. Is that even possible? Like uh, the game constantly changes. Like you can't win it. You just have to keep playing the game. You, there's no winning the game of music. So I think maybe that's partly why music is um, right up my alley, or or why I started doing it was because I had done sports and been good at sports and realized I'm never going to be the best. Or I don't know if I realized that in my head then, but I realize it now. Um, you know, I, there was always something, somebody a little better than me, right? Like soccer, I was great at soccer, but was I scoring the most goals? No. So with music, it was like competing against yourself. You know, it's like, because there's multiple musical acts, there's, you know, you're just one of, you're one of many good musicians, but there doesn't have to be one best music you know musician or singer even though there's awards out there they don't really no they don't really say that okay this is the best person at this thing like and 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 to be honest i would not be the best music musician in the world either but like i said the competition's different right like it's it's not a competition in the same way it's more like you're competing against yourself you're competing nowadays, especially you're competing against everything, just attention in general. I didn't really think of it that way. You know, of course, we didn't think that way. This is 2023 mindset, you know, thinking of, oh, we're competing against Netflix. We're competing against the library. We're competing against, I know it's tough, but free books at the library, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Free albums, too. Uh, anyway... <clears throat> You're just competing. Do you remember by chance? Because I, I mean, I know it was a long, it's a long time ago for you. Um, but do you remember the first time that you played a show and like people were singing your words back? Like, how did that make you feel? That was one of my favorite things. I can't remember the first time because I just can't remember because I know it probably happened before this, but. We played, uh, I mean, you can't count, like, your friends, right? Like, that doesn't count. It's got to be, like, because I just remembered right. my friends knew our words. So, yeah, technically, it was pretty early on, the first couple shows. But, yeah, that's different. So, I would say, like, 
going on our first tour, that was really when it started happening, when people would have, you know, the first album. Yeah. Um, that was uh, 1995, the Cooler Than Camp tour. And it was... It was never stopped. It, it was main. We were the main support for. Well, it was just us and Blenderhead, but Blenderhead was the headliner. It was their tour, but we really kind of co-headlined that. As far as we were label mates, we were kind of like in tandem, driving together. We were both good friends. They probably made more money on that tour than we did, <laughs> if anybody made any money. Um, but. The reason why I say we were almost like neck and neck was because we had a, such a huge buzz that Blender had never really got, they, they never really got a, a big following in the U.S. or really anywhere. You know, they, they had, they were a great band. There's no reason why they, they shouldn't have gotten a bigger following, to be honest. But we um, just took the country and then the world by storm as far as like when, when people heard about us. If they were into that kind of music, they they yeah. were they were into it. So, it was a really exciting time. That I guess I honestly didn't realize was so so um, rare. You know, I, I get oh, back yeah. then. You know, back then, like I mean, you can think of how many. There's a lot of bands out there, but think of how many punk bands. You know, you probably a hundred punk bands that that have name recognition right now that are still playing, and that might be a lot more than. And how really old is. were you on your first tour? We, uh, I would have been eighteen, I think. Man. Eighteen, yeah. We would have. So all, that's not all of us were eighteen, yeah. That's it's not a normal life. Like that's not a normal thing that happened to you at eighteen. Well, we grew up fast, but we also was stunted because we didn't have to grow up past basically being an. A late teen, early twenty. Yeah, like everything was done. Everything important was seemingly done for us, even though things definitely fell through the cracks and didn't get done. But we kind of just thought they were being done. Yeah. Um, you know, on, on, even on, in a life scale, like my mom still cleans my room. That song is so true because it means more than just that. It, it, it's talking about the fact that, like, you know, I went on tour right out of high school and still lived at home and didn't really do much at home. I was just always gone. And so, um, <laughs> you know, I, I wrote that song. I guess it was, yeah, it was. I wrote that song probably around our first tour or on our first tour. Um, that would have been drawing from literally uh, a, a month or two out of out of high school, you know, like, and still living at my parents' house. So, so, I was, so I was drawing from the time that I, in high school, it was drawing from my senior year living at home. Yeah. And, uh, my mom, you know, still cleans my room, you know, even though I'm definitely old enough to clean my own room. And, and she, I don't know if she actually really did. She would vacuum it sometimes, but like I had to pick up my, my drawers and my, uh, all my whatever crap laying around. Well, I, you were a I, teenage I'd boy, man. Bad. Like, regardless of what you remember or what you thought, your room smelled bad. Oh, I'm yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent smelled yeah. bad. Your mom went in there, probably just went, oh, ugh. I got to vacuum something. Something's got to happen. You would leave, and she just opened up windows. Like oh, that's, yeah. that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. The windows. The windows trick is real. Um, yeah. So yeah, I I mean, yeah. I remember one of the first things that I ever did when I started getting money was I bought an air conditioner for my bedroom. So like our house had central heating and air, but I love it cold. I like real cold spaces. Nice. So I went and bought a window unit like for my room in, in my parents' house and I put it in. I would it would run so cold that if you were on the outside of the house in the summertime and like looked at the house, I had ice, like on my window. And uh, I think that went on for about a month or two, and then my dad realized what I was doing to the electricity bill, and it had to, it had to trim <laughs> back just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> I didn't Dang. know that as a kid, though. I was like, I didn't realize it was going to just like pile up money that my parents had to spend, so I had to back that off a little bit. But, Dad, don't you know in 2023 it's going to be 
300% of, uh, up from there. Yeah. <laughs> Your electricity bag was probably $5 a month. Probably, yeah. <laughs> so check it out. My, my, uh, my junior year, I was working at this place called Spiro's, and I probably worked there from my, my sophomore year to my junior year through that. And then at the end of that year, I, I kind of got put left off the schedule, let's say. Um, but I had my dad's truck, and that was like my vehicle. It was this Dodge Dodge truck, Datsun truck, or something like that. It's a sil, sil, no Nissan. It was a silver Nissan. And um, so anyway, I would drive that to work. And one day I was leaving, and... I back up like I always do, and then I turned, and my parents' car was right there where it never is. And that was a oh. huge life lesson. Always look where you're going to turn, you know, yeah. even if something's not normally there. I mean, I you hit it? I hit it. I hit it. I caused, I caused $900, $900 plus dollars damage. What was smashed, your father's reaction? The, uh, a little concern. A little concern. A little concern. I think I think the fact that I had a job and I was a junior in high school. Oh man. Already I was already doing the band. Uh had already had an album out. I think no 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 no. No album out yet. We hadn't even recorded it yet, to be honest. Um so this is junior year. We recorded spring break. We recorded uh we recorded it our we recorded no, 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 no. We recorded um, Poking at You the summer before our senior year. And then we recorded Teenage Politics spring break senior year. So um, junior year was was just us doing local gigs, um, going to Canada now and then. Tooth and Nail was just discovering us, I think, our junior year. Yeah, we, were, we, were, we had met poor old Lou and Aaron Sprinkle, and he produced um four songs for us at his studio his studio in seattle or not his the studio he was working out of it wasn't his but um so that was all happening and i think that they were like okay well you're just gonna pay us back so oh so, so there were of, when it when it happened there were signs there were signs that something big might happen for mike so he was so. So he was holding it in. Oh, you boy, you get out there and make me some money. But I had to, I literally spent like half a, like, I would say three quarters of a year of my paychecks went to that. That. Oh, you paid it all back? I paid it all back. But Oh, good for you, man. But uh, I mean, back then to make $900 took me literally like six, seven months, eight months working nights, working. I would work Saturdays, days, but for the most part, I was going to school. So. I would work evenings. I would get there at like four thirty, five, and I would work till, you know, just depending on you know if it was not busy, I could get off. I was a bus boy and a dishwasher, for the most part, and and I could get off at like eight. My first job was a dishwasher, but usually I get off at like nine, nine thirty. My first job was landscaper, but uh, we all knew that. From, yeah, from a yeah song, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, first job, I quit in the most spectacular way that I could think of. Um, I I worked at Pizza Hut. I was a dishwasher at Pizza Hut, and I I, I was a teenager. So one night, part well, part of your closing duties as a dishwasher and uh, where I worked was you had to go clean the bathrooms. Yeah, and I went into the bathroom one night. And there was a stall with just a piece of paper on it that said out of order. So I didn't go inside. I cleaned everything else. I was like, well, it's out of order. There's no reason for me to go in there and touch things. And How new were next, you? How what? How new were you? How new was I? At this job? Um, I mean, I only worked there for like a year, so it was, wasn't long. It wasn't was your young. first day, though. Oh, no. So you were like, I just don't want to deal with this. Well, it just said out of order, so I was like, I'm not going in there. All right. I'm not. It's out of order. Isn't there? There's no reason for me to go in there. Um, I mean, I was a kid, so I probably thought that to some degree. Yeah. All I knew was there was an out of order sign. I'm not a plumber. I don't know what's going on in there, but it's not me. So uh, 
I got a phone call the next day from the store manager. Now, her name was Wanda. And she went off on me. <laughs> she was like, I know you put that sign up just because it was nasty in there and you didn't want to clean it. And I was like, no, I didn't put the sign up. I said, I definitely didn't clean it. <laughs> so I didn't put the sign up. There was an out of order sign and I just didn't, I just didn't go in there. And she like screamed at me, dude. And I'm like a 16 year old. Mm. And she's like this 39, 40 year old Karen, honestly, is what she was. And I, I'm, I'm a spiteful person. And I make really bad decisions quickly because of my temper. And I was like, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Well, Tuesday was a buffet night. Mm. And during buffet night at Pizza Hut, it's like the most dishes, it's terrible. So I was supposed to be there at like five o'clock and I just didn't go. Mm -hmm. So she calls my phone, which is a, is a landline. And uh, she's, Oh, are, are you coming to work? And I was like, absolutely. I'm so sorry. My, my practice ran late at school. I'm on the way now. And then I just hung up the phone and started playing video games. So she calls back at like five 30 She's like, where are you? And I said, I'm driving there now. I'm on the way, which was an absolute lie because I didn't have a cell phone. There was no cell phones. And she's like, okay, cool. We'll see you soon. <laughs> and uh, then she calls me at six o'clock. And by six o'clock, it's thumping. Like they're busy. There's tables. Dishes are getting behind. And she goes, where are you? And I go, I didn't put the out of order sign on the door and I'm never coming back there again. And I just hung up. Whoa. And that was, that was it. And so hopefully that was a lesson for her to treat her employees with more respect. I to get my last paycheck, I had to bring my uniform back. Which looking back at it now, it's kind of gross. Like it was a shirt. Like I think it's, that's nasty. That's yeah. um, but uh, I took it back, and some of the employees were there were telling me they were laughing about it because she ran labor real tight. So when somebody didn't show up, it was it's a problem. Right. So she ended up having to be the one to wash dishes that night, and everybody. Everybody loved it. Beautiful. Yeah. It was great. I love it when a plan comes together. <sighs> I didn't plan it out. I was just angry. I was an angry child. So Pizza Hut. That, mm -hmm. that, was, that was kind of a decent place back in the day. I haven't been lately, so I don't know if it's still great. We've got um, one down the street from the studio in Bremerton, and I just never go there. I, I have Pizza Hut maybe once a year. Once or twice a year, maybe. Um, and it's always by myself. It's always like, I always feel dirty afterwards, you know? So it's like Taco Bell. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe. Um, or whenever Jack in I the stay, Box. Like, I think you, I've you, gone to Jack in the Box maybe one time. I don't really know what that is. They have yeah, like little Jack tacos, right? Is, it's, it, it's, yeah, they have, you know, do you remember the commercials back in the day with the big guy with the, with the bobblehead? Like yeah. The big white head? That was Jack in the Box. Well, I mean, I've seen it. We didn't have those commercials here. Oh, you didn't have the? Oh, yeah. It's weird. No, they don't, they don't have them here. It's regional, huh? Well, anyway, so. they have tacos, but they have burgers, and they have breakfast sandwiches. It's really, if, if it was quality food, it, back in the day, it was great for fast food, fast food, but I really feel like it's gone downhill, like Hardee's has gone downhill, like, like um, 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 what is it, Carl's Jr., do you know what that is? That's it's the same company. Way downhill. As what? Yeah. Hardy's, Hardy's? Charles Jr. and Hardy's. Hardy's is the same company. Yeah, yeah. they bought each other. I, I, it's just East Coast. I could be wrong. I, I think what the, the thing is is that Charles Jr. is actually the big Charles thing. Jr. <laughs> is that not right? No, Carl's Jr. is is just a fast food burger place. Kind of like, I think it, I only saw it in California and then, uh -huh. it, and then it got, and then it grew from there. Now yeah. we have it here in, in Bremerton and I'm sure we have it here in Waco and so which one bought Hardee's? Hardee's probably bought Carl's Jr. Okay. I know here in the South, they wouldn't change the name. Hardee's, you know what? Maybe Carl's Jr. bought Hardee's because Hardee's was like going down. Yeah. Um, and, and then, but that was maybe one of the stipulations is no, nobody knows Carl's Jr. on the East Coast. Keep it Hardee's and just you own, you, you take the money. Obviously you own it. It's it's old people, dude. You go to a Hardee's on like a Sunday morning, Saturday morning, and it's just people in their sixties to eighties. Here's a here's here's uh 
They have live music here. Here's a tip. In, in the Hardys. I was going to say, here's a tip. Don't go to Hardys ever. But the live <laughs> music is interesting. What, why do, what kind of live music? Um, there's always these Is that where No people. Effect, the no, last No Effects tour is happening? <laughs> no. Have you listened to that new album? Uh, is it? I don't think. I think I heard one song off of it. I'll, oh, get, I'll get to it. I love it, dude. Cool. It's so good. Um, I probably listen to that Darby Crash and Party song once a day. Okay. Like well, once a day. It's so it's interesting really that, that like there's so many purists that are like, okay, they haven't released anything good in the last four albums. But then you have people like yourself and other, you know, just random people that are like, no, I love the new stuff. It, it, well, but I think there's just a, you know, did you, I don't know if you grew up listening to their, you know, white, I didn't. Tra white, white trash tubes in a bean. I didn't. S and M airlines. Like I, I grew up listening to all their old stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so it doesn't, but, but, so it's always interesting to like just watch it because I'm watching sort of from an outside perspective of I listen to a song period. I don't I, I don't really feel like it's hard it's hard for people to make good records these days, right? Like yeah. there's always going to be a few songs that somebody doesn't like, right? I don't know. It doesn't mean well, you shouldn't try. I'm still honestly in the if I had to, I don't know if I had to. To give it a stage, I guess. I'm sort of still discovering No Effects. Exactly. Cool. Um, I had listened to them so you, just randomly from like, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, like I went to Warp Tour and I got a compilation CD and I, they had some songs on there as well as Rancid and and I liked it, but I never went out and like bought No Effects albums or listened to them or anything. Yeah. Um, I knew who they were and I liked a song or two, but I didn't really really know them until the pandemic started. And that's when my love for No Effects just went through the roof. They they put a a concert out on or not a concert, just a show on uh, YouTube called it was it was it was at Fat Mike's house, but it's on YouTube. You can watch it for free, mm -hmm. and they played the whole album of the uh, you know the Sticking in My Eye album, and it was so much fun to watch. And I was like, oh, I need to check out more of their stuff. So when you hear me talking about how much I like the new stuff, maybe that's because I just now started listening that to makes them. makes total sense, yeah. So I've, I've still got a wide open mind. Yep. And uh, it's hilarious. I love the I, I love its concept of its songs. I'm still going through them now and like printing out the lyrics and like looking at them. And, oh, it's, it's so much fun. I like how I, Fat Mike writes songs – that have they go they go from like this part to this part to this part and it's almost like a progression yeah um and it doesn't go back to that first part ever like things like that that's kind of it's cool. wild he's unique yeah we we covered we covered uh one of their songs franco and american and uh that song's kind of like that where it does have a chorus that it comes back to but it's just a cool like okay I like the way he wrote this. This is interesting, you know, like this is really, really catchy. So uh, obviously I was a fan back in the day just listening and, and now I'm just, I'm a fan of, of just, you know, what they've done throughout their whole career. Um, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Like I love that you're finding it now and you have a different perspective on it, you know, not having any precious feelings for those old records, you know, and a lot of MXPX fans might be good to hear that, you know, to hear that, like, okay, there's some people that like the newest stuff that we've done best of all. And uh, I didn't say, I didn't say that. I didn't say I liked it best of all. <laughs> I just said pretty amazing. Um, I, 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 I really like a lot of their old stuff. I really like a lot of their old stuff. I know I, I like you. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't flip you me off. You ruined my point. No, I'm kidding. No, no uh, I understand. I understand what you're saying. I stand by it, though. There are, just because it maybe you don't like their new stuff best of all, doesn't mean there's somebody that likes their new stuff best of all. And there's somebody that likes our new stuff oh, best shoot, of all. Oh, shoot. You know what? I'm going to stick my foot in my mouth. I think I like their new stuff best of all. Do yeah. You, do you I really? do. I do. I, yeah, so I personally you, you, you have were like spot on. I interrupted you. That's okay. I, I've been interrupting you a lot too. Sorry, it's the it's the booze. Um, I uh, have an album from almost every band that's my favorite. You know that I listen to that album all the like more than any of their other albums, and that's just it's beautiful to to have that. You know, to have anything that you like that much that you'll go back to it over and over. Yeah. Um, 
And if I've done any of those albums for people, like that truly is mind blowing to me, you know, like because to occupy the space, to occupy time, you know, like I see plenty of people listening to everybody but MXPX, you know what I mean? So like when people really do listen to MXPX, it trips me out. It's like, whoa. Like you're saying, when people list, uh, sing back your lyrics for the first time, it's similar to when you know people are just listening to you. Especially nowadays, it means so much more nowadays because time is so much more precious now than yeah. it was then. Yeah. Why is that? Because of the internet. The internet has made us realize there ain't time. There's not enough time for anything. Well, there's, there's emotions tied into how you look at these albums. So with, with MXPX, if you were to ask me, like, what are your favorite albums? Um, the Ever Passing Moment was one of mine, for sure, 100%. And I, I, I love all the old stuff. But I'm going to be honest with you. When, when I put on MXPX in the car, it's your new stuff. Like, it, it's kind of a weird thing. Like, the old stuff is my favorite, but I think the reason for that is because I have so many memories tied into it, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but right now in my, it's, it's been a while since I've put on like an old album. Like every time that I have a few minutes and I'm like, oh, let's listen to MXPX. It's uh, the self-titled album or Still Waiting is one of, that's like one of my favorite songs you guys have done, honestly, out of everything. Like I, I love that one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the new stuff. And I, I bet there's people out there who, who probably feel the same way and they just don't realize it. Well, I think what you're saying, and I appreciate that, is when time passes and you mm -hmm. look back on now, and so you'll be listening to No Effects, the new album. You'll be listening to MXPX, the new album. Mm -hmm. And those memories are going to come back to you in the future. So like yeah. right now, your memories are back to the old MXPX album, you know, the ever-passing moment, maybe a, a White Trash, Two Heaps and a Bean, which is the sticking in my eye, No Effects yeah. album. Um, so... That's the one they played the whole yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, so good. Pretty awesome, Sorry. except for they didn't do it live. So, still can't do it like MXPX, baby. You know, no you're <laughs> you're you're right. It wasn't live. You're right. Still entertaining, but I I I'll stand by it. And I'm a humble guy, but not many people doing it live like MXPX does it live on the internet. I mean, it's just straight up. Other people are saying that too. Like it's, I mean, like you sound real cocky right now, but <laughs> other people are saying it. So, I mean, it's, you're not making it up. It's not inaccurate. Hey, where's the lie? Say, say it again. Say it one more time. Does it, make, does it make you feel good on your insides? Like right in here? Uh, I got to warm like, myself somehow. It's cold out here. It's only 28 uh, degrees. It's not that cold. So I've seen every one of them that you guys have done. Mm-hmm. And we enjoy it every time. It, it is, it's really good. It's really good. You guys do a good job. Thanks. So. Yeah, I think, you know, what's fun about the fact that you know that it's live makes it that much more interesting. And so people watching that no effects thing, thinking it's live, we're, we're like, okay, this is awesome. And it still is, it's great. And I've seen it too. But I can't lie and say that it's as good as the mxpx stuff because we did it live maybe it's as good as as ours entertainment wise but it ain't as good live because we actually played live we didn't we didn't we literally didn't mix anything it was mixed as we played it it was done it goes through the, the computer i think there's a lot of people that don't understand how hard that is it's very hard and we're constantly like, trying to like fix things because like if you if you leave any sorry go, go ahead no 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 I, that, yeah that's what i'm saying like tonight i'm using one microphone and i bet i spent 30 minutes just making sure it it sounded okay I, just one microphone no music no preamps like nothing just one microphone recorder and a computer and yeah it took me like 30 minutes before i felt sort of comfortable with it and you guys are doing oh my god it's insane like everything that you had running, and it sounded fantastic. Like it sounded good. You could release it. I appreciate that. 
even when we mess up, it's it somehow kind of sounds kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what. Maybe because it's live. Maybe that's the only reason. But uh, you know, you mess up a little bit here and there, and it's. I don't know. It's kind of good. Like when I watch back, sometimes I get nervous. Even if I watch back like a, a live show, if I, mm-hmm. I get nervous listening because even if I know I did something just fine, like yeah, it was fine. I don't want to like listen and hear something that I didn't realize I did. You know what I mean? So it makes me nervous to listen back to the live shows, even though I got to do it because I got to like see how things look, see how things sound, see how the pacing is, things like that. Um. You know, last week on the podcast, I was mentioning that I'm just like not very organized and like my my diet plan, my exercise yeah. plan, um, all of those things aren't really plans. It's just like I tweak things in my mind and then I try to do them in real life and it works. And so it's like you can't write that down in, in a book and give that to people. You know, like it's they're going to be like, what is this? This is crap. Like I can't I can't follow this. There's no structure here, you know, so feel like that's just literally my life for the most part. Like I get flights. I get one-way flights for the most part, unless it's like a show where I got to go here and back or whatever. But like aside from that, I always get one ways because I just don't know what I'm going to be doing. It's, it's funny. Like, you you feel – the way that you're describing how you feel about I guess the stuff that you have going on, how, what your organizational skills are, I can tell you this from my point of view, it's definitely next level, the stuff that you're doing. Like it's it's conversations that I've had with Katie before. I'm like, man, I'm 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 looking at the stuff he's doing, and it makes my stuff look like garbage. Like it's crazy. Um, e- even even just the podcast, you're so consistent. I mean, like you might feel like it's just you know from the hip or whatever, but it's it it it's what you do is really consistent. And but I mean, that's probably why you have such good longevity in this. Thanks, Bob. Wow. Well, that's, you, you know, it, it's good to hear that perspective. I appreciate that. Um, I think it's probably just comes down to the fact that not everybody has the same gifts, you know, and your gifts are lying in somewhere other than what my gifts are lying, right? So that's how we can work well together. Like if you were trying, you know, we're both podcasters, but we're also doing other things you know um i don't know it's uh and it's way different that's the crazy part that's the excuse that i tell myself anyway is hey we can't all be good at everything (laughs) and and we're not we're not we we know we are not we're not and and it's uh the best is when someone thinks they are and they're not that's the best yeah like when there's a word for that and i can't remember that word that that confidence level when there should be none yeah like at, at that it, moment, it, the, I don't have that. Somebody can can write in and tell me what this is called, but like the definition is um, when there's when someone is an expert in one field, mm-hmm. and they then they go to another field and they think they just know because they're smart, and they just assume that everybody else is an idiot, and so somebody that might not know about their own their field that this person is is trying to like teach might know a whole lot about this other field, right? Apples versus oranges. And whatever that is called is definitely, it's like a a phrase or a word where um, we've become, we've, we've, we've been overrun by experts in this country, in this world. So many people on the internet that uh, I should know the term, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't, you can do, you can just google can't you just google uh, can't you google definitions and it'll give you the word can you google definitions maybe yeah like so. some just a sentence yeah everybody just went oh yeah, yeah. everybody <laughs> listening Duh. just made that noise <laughs> can you do that like you know that that's like that remi- quick tell a joke <laughs> that reminds me of of when i saw it was like um it was The Apprentice or something. Remember Donald Trump had a show called The Apprentice? I never watched it. So Rob Blagojevich, the former governor of Illinois that got put in prison for trying to sell Obama's Senate seat with bribery, 
and he was caught on tape. So anyway, you not ringing a bell at all? Dude, I... Somebody knows this. It's my knowledge on <laughs> politics is extremely limited. I'm, I'm going to tell you what. I'll, I'll, I'll down myself out. When Trump was president, I'm when I look back on it, I don't think I was super confident in Mike Pence's name until the fly landed on his head. Like when it became something that I was like, "Oh, that's fun." That's fun. Like I, I just I, I don't I don't know I don't I don't follow it. I certainly that didn't close. know Mike Pence until he was running, but but um, Bl- Blagojevich got sent. What'd you say, to like Blagojevich? What? Oh, somebody talking got- to you. Katie's, Katie's, she's, she, she's looking at me with these intense eyes because I'm, I'm letting the world know. <laughs> she's supervising what I'm saying. Oh right goodness! Now. <laughs> Great. So, so, so she, she, she drew the line at, at politics. Yeah, we just, we don't. <laughs> we don't do it. She, she, she literally just looked at me and says, "Hey, hold on. My name is on the show too." So. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, Katie. Well, if you want to have a say, you better get on on the podcast right now you can jump in you got to get on camera she, she um, went away she went away quick huh no, he said he said if you have something you want to say you have to come over here we're we arguing can't, on we can't on hear Mike's you we right can't now. hear you over there so so anyway blagojevich i, I was reminded by the fact that you got can stop. she hear me can she have headphones no she can't how, hear you how could she hear me? she's just yelling at me dude. Oh, okay okay <laughs> Well, she'd be more mad if she could we're hear not, me. We're not talking about politics anymore, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we, I never, promise. we never were. We were talking about Rob Blagojevich being sent as apprentice. So anyway, he was on The the Apprentice, <laughs> Trump's uh, Celebrity Apprentice show. Anyway, yeah, I never watched that show. Oh, so entertaining. So entertaining. As, a, uh, um, as somebody that was in a place where I knew I had to hustle, that was a great show to watch. Anyway... My point in telling this whole thing before we were so rudely interrupted was, uh, I'm just kidding, Katie. I love you. Uh, you can interrupt anytime, but next time, come on. Um, so he was on the show, and he was talking about how... So on the show, you have to do things, right? If you're on the show, The Apprentice, you have to get together with your team, your other celebrities, and you have to, like... Because uh, think of a brand name and sell some candies on the street in New York and like sell the most candy or whatever you know it could be anything right but okay. it's something to do with entrepreneurship it's something to do with selling something to do with making a deal something to do with like hustling right and Rob Blagojevich the former former mayor or no governor of Illinois was trying to help out and and they're like okay can you send an email to blah 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 and he's like. I've never sent an email before. I don't know how to send an email. What? And he was literally like trying to type on the computer. And he was like, yeah, my assistant always did it. And I was like, how, <laughs> how do you get to be the governor of Illinois? And you can't send an email. And you can't send an email. Wow. That's, so that's incredible. That to me was like. When I saw that, I laughed for one, and I just couldn't believe it. And I was like, "There's people out there like that," and I feel like our little conversation <laughs> before was like that. Like, there's people out there that don't know, but we know. We're just kidding. come on. We know. We figured it out somehow. But <laughs> but there are people out there that don't really don't know anything about life, and it's just mind blowing when they make it so so far in life. Yeah. Nothing, I, nothing to say it's no because there's just there's so much of it now and blagojevich you got blagojevich yeah it's everywhere it's there's so many people that have these very strong opinions and they talk and you're just like i don't think you should be saying things right now like you you feel really confident in what you're saying and we're all looking at you like oh i'm not sure um like like on on my show, one of the things we do is we we try to find entertaining news stories, mm-hmm. and that gets kind of difficult because you can't believe anything now. Like you have to like verify a whole bunch, and even then, I'm kind of like ah, I'm not sure. Like right now, there's this story about 
um, that I that I came across, and I haven't I haven't put it out there on our show yet because I can't verify it. About someone Let's who put it out now. <laughs> yeah, someone pulled up to a gas station. They were filling up their gas, and when they pulled away, uh, a penis fell out and landed on the ground, and like someone found it. Yeah, but I've only. I haven't been able to, to verify that with multiple news sources yet. So, like, I'm, I, I'm, I wanted to dive into that so bad because it sounds like it's crazy. It's a crazy story, but I don't know how to confirm it. You're going to have to get this, real close to the source to verify. I'm not getting real close. Real close. No, like get no. Your, get, you uh-huh. know, get close to the smell. <laughs> the smell? The smell. Oh. I mean, you would think that it would smell nasty. I would. Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> Hey, okay. speaking of speaking of male, male genitals, let me let me ask you a question. MXPX. <laughs> okay. Um, you guys started when you were 16, 17, 18. Um how who in your band, because I, I, I believe it's at least one, who have you seen naked the most? Because <laughs> I, I have an answer that I think it is. I, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think it is? It's Tom, right? Correct. Ding, ding, ding. Tom. <laughs> yep, Tom. Was it a problem? <laughs> it was not a problem. Tom. You said it so fast, like oh, he did it all the time. Yeah, all the, he was always <laughs> naked. No, he was not always naked. He was not always fully naked. But you know, he. We didn't have an issue. I mean, we, would, whatever. We we lived. You know, basically, we lived together. We did yeah. not. Uh, I mean, we didn't walk around naked around each other. But yes, I mean, there were times. There were times. <laughs> it wasn't like a gym locker room. Like, a, no. <laughs> no reason to be uh, swinging dick, right? Um, I have a couple of... Uh, I have a couple of <laughs> That was comments. the weirdest, weirdest transition that I feel very strange about. But go ahead. No, that's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> that's what I want to do. What are you? I, what are you? What are you trying to say? Let's get to it. Come on. Come okay, on. I've got some uh, social media things for you. All right. So I've got some people who wanted me to to ask you a few things, or you know, just sort of what's going on. Instead of voicemails, um, we have social media comments, questions. Yeah, same thing. So uh, I got one from uh, Jen, who she just this one kind of was a little concerning, honestly. Okay. It just said, "I want to hear stalker stories." Stalker stories. Yeah. Like my my first thought is okay. What are we doing? Are we trying to get notes? Like, is it, do we know what to do? What, what to do? I mean, like, what to look out for? Nothing <laughs> life threatening. Nothing that I know of. Nothing life threatening. Um, all things that were just weird weirdos. You know. You ever have anybody just show up? Oh yeah. Like at your house? Oh yeah. Really? Not recently. That's terrifying. Luckily, but. That's terrifying. It's happened. Let's put it that way. It's happened. Do you get do you get tired of like people coming up to you in public? No. Public I is love fine. It. Public is public. You want to talk to me in public? I mean, obviously, if like I'm like about to win a million dollars, if I just you know tap this button and then you like pull me away and somebody else taps the button, I'd be a little upset. But aside from like some thing that something like that that's never going to happen mm-hmm. come say hi you're good i think the, I, the worst part is if, if i'm actually eating if i have food in my mouth not a good time but any other time than that should be all right i'm i was a i was a watch me kid growing up like a hundred percent like i would always like watch me watch me watch me i can do this i can do this like i was that person so when it when it started happening to me i love it I love it. I'm kind of. I, I was actually had this conversation with Katie earlier. Um, the thing that's that's happening right now. <laughs> when, so tell us some stories. When have you been recognized? My my favorite my favorite story. The like one of the first times that I ever got recognized in public. I was at work. So I'm at work. I've got like the uniform on. My boss is with me. We're you know walking around and looking at things on you know just he's kind of critiquing my jobs and whatnot. And someone walks up and goes, you're Bob. And I'm like, yeah, can I help you find something? And he goes, no, 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 I, I, 
I, I, I like the podcast so much. I was like, oh, thanks, man. And then he goes, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I go, I'm, I'm working. And he goes, oh. And I was like, how much did you pay to listen to my podcast? I go, it's free. And I was like, that's why I'm working here. <laughs> like I, and like he walked off and my boss goes, oh, something you need to tell me? And I'm like, no, I'm just I'm talking to a microphone. That's it. Um, yeah, I wrote a gay porn site. It's cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but uh, what happens now, I, it's, it's so funny because I'm definitely the one out of me and Katie that likes attention. And whenever, whenever someone says something in public now, it's, it's never like, oh, Bob, you're so funny. It's, it's one of two things that happens most of the time. They either recognize me from your show or they're like, oh, the Bob and Katie show. And then they'll just go, Katie's so funny. And I'm like, yeah, she is. I'm on it too, though, right? You know that. <laughs> no, um, nice. she, oh, she's the star. She is the star. And everybody lets me know. But I get it. I know. Um, I, I married above my level, 100%. And I'm good with it. Um, I, I, I have friends that have made comments before, like, how do you talk to your wife so much? And I'm like, I like her. I like her a lot. I had I drove I had to drive five hours today, um, wow. two and a half one way to work and two and a half back. And there was uh, I had a, I talked to Katie today for like an hour just on the phone. Like we were sixteen and seventeen year olds just chatting on the phone. Obviously, the conversation was much different. You yeah, know, we talked yeah. about you know life things and what's going on and and whatnot. But I, God, I love talking to her. So it was a it was a no brainer. Like oh, we should definitely do a podcast together. But uh, it's funny how it is mostly on my side. Like I, I love doing this. Like it, it's kind of my thing. Um, as far as like the idea to to create this, and she was just like, "Oh, I'll do it with you." She's very she like she's just from the hip, and everybody everybody loves it. Everybody so it. it's kind of like if you were gonna do a band, you might mm-hmm. have her as like your sidekick. Mm-hmm. Two singers. Yeah. So is she going to sing too? Yeah. She, has she been? No. No. We no, gonna, she won't. going to get her? She won't sing in front of people. That's a problem. So, She'll talk yeah. in front of people, but she won't sing in front of people. Oh, and she sings well too. That's the thing. She sings better than I do. There you go. Yeah. She sings really. She sings to our kids Maybe. all the time. All the time. So, but it's good. So, um... Stalker stories. Okay. Um, what this is from Jeffrey. It's a two-parter. Uh, what is your favorite song to perform live? And then also, are you familiar with a band from back in the day named the Combat Junkies? Um, not familiar with the Combat Junkies. Favorite song to perform live. You, I'll, I'll just let you know he's broke his heart because he was the drummer. <laughs> uh, sorry, bro. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, that's great. I'm that was, sure you guys awesome. are great. I'll have to check it out. I'll uh, look it up. Combat Junkies. Um, I, don't, I don't think you can find it anywhere. <laughs> okay. I might, I might get <laughs> send you something. It's they were good. really good, though. They got signed to a label called Steel Root Records long, long okay. time ago. It got real big and hyped up, and I think it just yeah. went away eventually. They had a TV channel. It was very, um, nice. it was it was really skateboarder like Christian type of thing. It was it was pretty cool. Cool. Favorite song um, to perform. Favorite song to perform live. Let me see. Um, I I was just say tomorrow's another day. Um, really, always fun. Um, I would say. Uh, that's a tough one. I, I think Moments Like This is one of my favorites. Um, can't Keep Waiting. It's so that's good. Fun. That's a fun one to do. I, yeah. I like that one. Um, obviously, it's going to be some of the new ones, too. Um, all right. Next question. Who's Jack Parker? Jack Parker. Guitar player from Tumble Down. Played oh, that, played that okay. Oh, okay. He uh he wants to, you to tell the story about when y'all got arrested in El Paso. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tumble Down tour. So Tumble Down was my 
side project that I started, and then MXPX was was when MXPX played. Maybe I don't I don't remember if we ever didn't do a show in it in one year. I feel like we did like one show a year for a few years, but there might have whatever whatever the the real truth of it is. I'm sure we can figure that out eventually. But Tumble Down became really my main band from 2007 to 2013 and then after that mxpx took back over and here we are but um so anyway man tumble down we were on tour heading east we were we played in um in tucson arizona i think or or yeah i think it was tucson arizona and we had that hard drive all the way across to Texas and we were going to Dallas, Texas and we went through um, El Paso, right? And as we went through El Paso, we had a van and trailer and we were driving all night long. Harley, our drummer, was driving and he got done with his drive, smoked a bowl, ch 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 went to bed, and at that point, I was in bed as well. I was sleeping, and I th I don't know if Jack or... I think Jack Parker was driving. I, I could be wrong, but it was in the morning, so Jack only drove it, it during the daytime. And all I, I can remember is I wake up to... Knock, knock, knock. Hey, come on out. Hey, you guys. Oh, gotta... no. And uh, <laughs> it was basically like, because we had a bed underneath and a bed on top. And I was in the bed underneath, which looks like you're smuggling humans. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, And so we're no. on the border of Mexico, and they're checking for drugs. <laughs> they're checking for everything. We weren't going through the border. This, this is the thing. We're, we're just on... on on the highway in the U S and so, so I, I'm like crawling out of there. Like, like this spider hole. It looks like, I don't know if anybody saw the, the, the pictures of Saddam Hussein when they found him in that spider hole in that bunker. Yeah. That's what it looked like. I was like in this bunker and I like crawled out and I'm like, you can breakfast burritos guy. and hot sauce. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I smell of breakfast burritos. It's like, dude, you are for sure illegal. Where's your papers? You're going back. So the, everybody's out. We go into this police station they have there, and they're asking us all these questions. They read us our rights. They bring us in. They interrogate us separately, one by one. Like, where they're like, where's the drugs? Where's the drugs? Blah blah blah. We're like, we're just a band. We're going through, and. They take out everything. They they search our whole trailer. They search our whole van. And we're sitting there for a while. And we're like, we're just, you know, we have a show in Dallas tonight. And they're like, well, you're going to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you don't. And uh, so they read us our rights. They They patted us down. They interrogated us one by one. Nobody ratted on anybody. We just... I don't know what you're talking about. We're just banned. Good. And or they're almost going to let us go, and then they bring in all these pills. <laughs> what? <laughs> Literally, I shit you not. They're not like crazy pills. They're they're just like ibuprofen and like um, you know codeine laced you know based aspirin and things like that. You know, like yeah, like um. There was some like Vicodin, but it, w it was just like a few things or whatever. And they're like, "What is this to me?" And I'm like, "Honestly, my wife gave me that. I I don't know." Like, <laughs> because I literally did get some of that stuff in Mexico um, on a different <laughs> tour. But uh, it was it, the the problem was is like there was like a bunch of different pills. Like I put my my Aleve and my aspirin and my ibuprofen all in one thing you know and so they were looking at all this stuff and they had this book out they're like they're looking at this pill bible it was like the narcotic bible and they're looking for these pills like wow. what is this what is this and i'm like it's just it's just a 
a vitamin or a thing, you know, this is a aspirin, this is a, vi-, you know, and they finally believed, you know, they're like, okay, fine. Like, they didn't have, like, a big, st- they didn't find a big score, right? They found, of course, they found, uh, you know, Harley's Bowl and they found, you know, whatever. Um, enough to get arrested if it's illegal, you know, but, like, they they wanted that big score. And they so didn't have it. they finally were like, all right, we'll let you guys go. So how so long were you, go. when did they let you go? That night, that the day, next day? That, day? that day. Did you make the show? We drove our asses straight to Dallas, and we were a little late, but we made the show. Nice. We didn't get a sound check. Nice. We just, that show we played with like, it was like, it was like a, a an Elm Street tattoo after party, like okay. where all these tattooers were hanging out. July Alley, which doesn't exist anymore, but that's where our show was and it's this big tall stage and this guy Corey I can't remember his last name but he was on like my uh LA Inc he was like the tattooer on LA Inc uh aside Kat Von D his name was Corey something and he was a drummer and and like and Oliver's like Corey's a drummer like have him you know play a song with him or whatever and so we had him come up and we played like a Tom Petty song with him and uh, just like on the spot that's right yeah on the spot like Tumble Down was one of the best live bands you'll ever see. I mean, and aside from the fact that nobody I, does I, it like us, I know I'm in the band, but <laughs> but those guys, the band, were so good. You know, so good at improvising, so good at playing drunk. Marshall was probably the sloppiest out of everybody. Everybody else was pretty good most of the time. Marshall would get a little crazy, very very sloppy, very dirty, but. You know, I have lots of stories I probably never told about those situations, but uh, maybe for another time. But I'll continue with this story. July Alley. So so as soon as we left the border, as soon as they let us go, I started, I grabbed my notebook. Boom. I start writing Arrested in El Paso Blues. And oh, I wrote that song. I nice. started writing. Um I don't even remember the lyrics now. I, I, it's been so long since I even thought about that song. Um, but told that story at the show. Be like, I wrote this song, blah, blah, blah. We didn't play it that night or whatever, but like, you'll be hearing it soon. And um, we just partied. We just, like, anytime anything, like, I think a couple episodes ago, I told the story about about us getting um, our passports stolen in Mexico. Yes. And the flat tire and all that um, being stopped at the border. I've heard so many of your stories. A lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of stories. You know, this is the 279th episode you and I have worked on together. (laughs) Isn't that wild? That's creepy. Oh, long time. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's all good. It's all good. That's great. That's a lot of episodes. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah. It's been a, it's been. Like are you 2016? Are you saying you've heard what? the passport Mexico story so many yeah. times? Or yeah, that no, 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 just no. Just stories. Period. I've heard so many of your stories. I don't even know them anymore. Like it's just it's so much stuff. It's it's rad. Yeah. Um, it's it's one of those situations where, like, I, like I listen to uh, I listen to Tell Him Steve Dave. It is uh, it's my, it's my favorite podcast to listen to. Love it. And I've listened to so much that I feel like I know them dudes. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. I feel like I could be in a room with them and just get along. Mm-hmm. But to them, they're like, who are you? Like, get away from here. Um, but with you, I have like that same thing. Like, I've, I've listened to you so much. I'm like, I know all this about you. But then I really know you. And it's like, well, this is, it's, it's kind of this weird fourth wall type of thing yeah yeah for sure the meta thing yeah so like he started telling the story i was like wait i've heard this story i was a part of it this is weird but not really strange (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. absolutely so yeah so that 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 you know july alley we partied our asses off and had a great time and and like i said tumble down was such a good live band um it was a different vibe because with mxpx like I'm not drinking constant i mean like tumble down back in the day and and it would be different maybe if we were to play it would be different in the in the way where I probably wouldn't drink as much as I was drinking back then. But back then mm-hmm. we were drinking a lot, and I had a high tolerance, and I could drink like 
three shots, four shots, five shots of tequila during the show, and then other drinks, and you know, and and keep going, and then be fine the next day. No hangover, nothing. Like good. Wow. Um, now I'm sure I. I'm sure we'd have a good time now, but like there was just it was just a crazy time. Like we we drank every night on tour with Tumble Down, and those shows were off the rails. Another thing that's different is like I'm playing acoustic guitar, and we mm-hmm. have this band that's just like this train that just goes, 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 and I could have J- Jack do the solos and stuff, and like we could do these little back and forth things. And I could like talk shit to the audience, and like it's just a different vibe altogether than MXPX. MXPX is uplifting. Tumble Down is shit talking, like drinking, cheersing with your friends. Um, it's just a, it's like a like an alter ego almost. Like it's yeah. me, it's it's us. It's like, but like, it's MXPX is. It's uplifting, you know, whereas Tumble Down ain't uplifting. I'm sorry. It's not it's not pulling you down either. But it's not necessarily like healthy, right? Like it's um maybe that's what's so good about it. That's like we like all the unhealthy things in life, you know. We we don't like to eat salads, we like to eat candy, we like ice cream, we like pizza, we like corn well, we don't really like corn dogs. Some of y'all like corn dogs. Dude, I love corn dogs. I bet you do. <laughs> what? <laughs> corn dogs. This episode is going to be called Bob's Corn Dogs. I'm okay with it. Um, I mean, is- I, 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 I mentioned corn dogs was because my kids ate corn dogs today. And I had a bite. And I was like, yeah, I couldn't eat, I couldn't eat more than a couple bites of this. Yeah, but what corn dogs were they? That's that's an important they were question. Good corn dogs, actually. They you got to get the uh, honey battered ones. They were man. really. They were from a, a restaurant, like a really good restaurant bar we, we went to. Anyway, oh, that's a, that's a fancy corn dog. Yeah, it was a fancy corn dog. We we discovered this place in Waco that's <laughs> amazing. We discovered a new place in Waco that's amazing. That's only been open about a year or less than a year. It it opened after we left last summer. It opened and. Uh, we're like blown away by how cool this place is. Camp Finfo. There, I said it. But it's got a it's got a full bar, food, amazing food with like a really good uh chef. Um, or at least the chef made a great menu and whoever can make it, but mm-hmm. uh, full bar and it's all Airbnb with mini like um little mini houses. What do you call those? Mini houses, like the little tiny houses, tiny homes. Okay. You know what a tiny home is? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's a home that is very small. <laughs> so so it's a tiny, so it's a small house. It's a home for ants. Okay. So anyway, ants. but it's got this, it's got this jump pillow in the, so, so there's a playground, there's all these different types of playground things, like a, like a, a kick version of pool. It's got bocce ball. It's got tennis courts. It's got. Uh, pickleball courts. I played pickleball the other day. Amazing. It's got this, it's got a zip line. Um, it's got all <laughs> this the stuff, best way man. I've ever heard it described. It's got one of those. That was perfect. Yeah. So it's got this pillow, this jump pillow where it's just, I don't know, you think of like as big as a basketball court, but a pillow. Maybe like a slightly smaller than a basketball court, but almost as big. But it's a pillow and you jump on it. And it's crazy. It's uh, and then during the summer it's closed now. But during I think in March or April it uh the water slides open. So there's a full water park at this place, and it's all free. What? There's mini golf. It's all fr- the the water park is not free, but all the places that are open now, like the, just the playground and all that, it's all free. Yeah. You know, you order drinks at the bar. That's not free, but you could just show up and like play. Play tennis, play pickleball, just do it. I'm down. I'm yeah. gonna show up one day. I'm gonna knock on your door and be like, "Let's go to this place you were telling me about." Yeah, I mean, maybe not like show up, but like let me know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that takes all the fun out of it. It's gonna I, be a surprise. I, I hate surprises, and I hate ran like I hate like random things like that. But oh, speaking of random, but I like you. So oh, you know, I we'll, like we'll you make too, it work. Mike. We'll make it work. I I actually do have a question for you from okay. myself. Uh, you 
played a song with Tony Hawk. You talked about it on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So I don't mean to like bring it up again and bore people, but I am. Dude, that's so incredible. I do have a question. I listened to him today, actually, on uh, Two Bears, One Cave. He was uh, he he did it with uh, Bert Kreischer. And did you know, like a month ago or something like that, he broke or had surgery on his femur? Yes. So was that a thing during the show? Was he did he not get to move around or he? No, he can walk, but he he couldn't. He hasn't really skated a lot yet. He's skated a little bit, and he's put out some videos about it. But so he's just still kind of like at the beginning of re- well. Not the beginning of recovery. He's he's in mm-hmm. recovery. So he's towards the end of recovery where he's like just starting to skateboard again and he did a kick flip, I think, the other day and that kind of thing. Yeah. Man, he yeah. told the story about what right. happened. Like he broke his femur and then just a, like a month or two later, he's like, I think it's okay. I'm gonna start skateboarding. And he just started skating again and he was limping he couldn't get through like airports but he was still out there skateboarding and then he went and got the the x-ray and they found out like his bones weren't even connected and he had to have yeah wasn't yeah and he had to have surgery again oh. and this time he was like all right i guess i'm gonna take it easy this time yeah, <laughs> like what are you soon, doing dude. man um you don't heal I, as uh quickly when you're as old as tony is he's 56 it's kind of insane that he's 56. Yeah. I mean, he looks great. He still can skate. Like, I mean, obviously he broke his femur. Like, I can't imagine breaking a bone this old. I've never broken a bone. I've sprained, never broken a bone. I don't think I have either. Had I could be wrong. Wood there. Yeah, I have none. <sighs> I have but, none. But as, as soon as touring and, and MX Peaks got super, super serious... I wouldn't go crazy on skateboarding. I would skate a little bit, but like, no, you know, kick, kick flips here and there, but no yeah. going up on ramps where you can just doosh. Because I got hurt on ramps, you know, plenty back in the day. Little mini ramps, five footers, that kind of thing. Um, you know, sprain my wrist, land on my wrist, ooh, knock the wind out of myself. Like, no, no, thank you. Did I, did I tell you the story about me? I, I fractured my ribs on a skateboard. Uh, of course you haven't told me that. I'm um, okay. So my <laughs> band, my band was playing at this uh, skate park in Hampstead, North Carolina, and they were selling tickets, like raffle tickets, to raise money for something. I don't even remember what it was. And uh, we had like two or three more songs, and I got on the mic, and they hadn't really sold a lot of these tickets. And I just <laughs> go, "Okay, everybody, if we sell three hundred tickets, I'll drop in from a ramp." And I was probably, I don't know, 280, 290 pounds. I was wow. <laughs> way bigger than I am now. And uh, everybody went into a frenzy. They sold all of those tickets, I think, before like the next song. Like it happened real fast. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I ended up not, it wasn't even a, uh, I can't remember. I don't know what it's called. It wasn't even like a half pipe I dropped in on. It was like a sort of a box in the middle of the floor, but it was a pretty good drop, probably like four feet. Pyramid. And uh, I didn't have a skateboard, but I went up there with some dude. He's like, oh, you can use my skateboard. And I knew it was a problem because I had his board in my hand and I spun the wheel and it just goes. (laughs) It didn't stop spinning. I don't know what kind of skateboard that was but i was like this thing's gonna be fast mm-hmm. it's gonna be really really fast but there's you know there's 100 200 people looking so i'm like all right we gotta do it i said i'll do it and uh i put the lip right there on the edge and i just fell <laughs> hit the ground real hard real fast there was no bounce Ouch. it was just boom and i found out like two or three days later that i had fractured I think like two of my ribs during I had to go to the hospital that night. It's like something is severely wrong. Ugh. And uh, yeah, that's what it was. Dropping Ouch. in. I should have never been and up there. And you had never dropped in before on a ramp or skateboard? Oh, God. You no. weren't a skater? No, no. I, I had skateboards kind of growing up, but I was a fat kid, man. Like, you know, we that's fall right. over easy. That's right. <laughs> Are we done on questions? Was there one more or no? We good? Uh, no, there's a couple more, but I think we've done good. I think we've done good. 
It was fun. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. We we could do this more. Or less. <laughs> we could do this once a year. I mean, you know. I, I think this is my third time. It's my third time on? Third time in like two, 279 time. or whatever yeah. it was. It's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's not yeah. bad. We've, we felt like this might have been the last one, but then I didn't do anything crazy this time, so. I had stuff. You insulted planned. me, but not too bad. So I'll, but, I'll let you back on. We'll, when we'll, did I? When I? What did I do? You insult? also complimented me quite a bit. I did. There was a lot, there was a lot of kiss assery going on. You're for gonna me. you're gonna have to find that out for yourself. Maybe. And your wife had to put you in your place. Like I mean, geez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she couldn't hear me. She'd be mad at me. She'll she'll probably be mad at me later. Yeah. We probably do need to call it. I'm a little uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable? Yeah. I've got... You make me uncomfortable, Mike. No, no, no. I have a... Uh, I, th- I think I've either got like a pimple or like an ingrown hair or something yeah, right behind, no, right behind my, not talk right about behind my bean bag. So like I've been sitting here this whole time. What? I've got to move around. What? All right. We're leaving that in. All right, you guys. You heard it here. Uh, Bob the bean bag. Bob the bean bag McKnight. That, see, I was going to say... If I Googled you earlier today, we'll end with this. I Googled you, and apparently... <laughs> Wait, you're what? The, you're the co-CEO founder of Quicksilver. What? There's a guy named Bob McKnight that, that founded Quicksilver, yeah. the surf company. His name's okay. Bob McKnight. Wow, that's kind of weird. So if you ever want to impress the ladies when you're out, be like, yeah, I'm Bob McKnight. Yeah, you ever heard of Quicksilver? Google it. Dude, Bob, always a pleasure. Um, you're one of a kind. No matter what, don't let that Quicksilver guy fool you. This is the real Bob McKnight. That's right. Appreciate it. And uh, until next time. Yeah. Love you, buddy. Glad you're well. Don't feel weird. I feel weird. Peace. My dog started licking my feet right towards the end of that, so I was starting to panic a little bit.